Mr. Kerr, I have a question on the budget. In the yes. last 5 or 10 years, yes. do, do they always meet their budget? Or they have always budgeted? Very good question. Okay, I'm uh, very authoritative to answer your, this question. Because I have been invited by Radio Malaysia in the past 20 years. Every year, uh, invited me to comment on the budget. Every year after the budget come out. So the answer is no. And they always ask for supplementary budget. Okay, and for no reason, valid reason, the cabinet will just approve. The final will approve. You know. So what is the point of having a budget? Cabinet or parliament? And they, of course, they go to the cabinet first, then they have the table to the parliament. And first. they will always approve this. Always. Budget, no question so all these this, this debate are pointless. Uh, right, because they have two-term majority. So never give the parliament a two-term majority. It's very bad for us. Mm. Do we they can pass anything they want. Do we need a tutor for passing the budget? No need, right? <coughs> no need, but the majority. Right? <coughs> yeah, but but when they have tutor majority, they, they do anything, anything they want, you know. So very dangerous. So I the answer is no. That's one. Number two, uh, for the year of 2015's budget and 2016's budget has been revised three times. Oh, yeah. Three times for 2015. Reason is because. Uh, they never expect the oil price to drop so drastically in such a short period of time in 2015. So they revised three times. Okay, and almost every year in the past five years, the last five years, almost every year they ask for a supplementary budget without any valid reasons to me. Also, I said, you know, so they just ask for more, not enough money, you know. So. Can I, can I have a question? Yes. Oil price is actually peaked in the end of uh, 2007, 2006, right? So then the trading at 110 US dollars. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. So what happened to all the money? Huh? Uh, well, uh, well, there will be a lot of money, right? Correct. correct. Uh, where yeah. is it? Huh? They should have a lot of surplus then. Yeah. So uh, in the year of before 2014, uh, of course, there are a lot of development. Uh, the time, during the time, our development budget is more than 18%. I think it's about twenty percent. I see. Okay. Uh, but after that, then we reduce every year from twenty to nineteen, eighteen, seventeen. Yep. Okay. Twenty eighteen is only seventeen. Mm. Go to development. And do you know how many percent are allocated for development expenditure for Stango State for development? How many percent? National is eighteen percent now. Last year seventeen percent mm. for Stango State. A good government. How many percent do you think? Eighty percent for national. Okay, last year is seventeen. Eh? So this year we have eighty percent for development. Snago State itself, how many percent do you think? Thirty percent. Okay. Good government. Ah. In other words, I'm trying to tell you is more than eighty percent, right? Yeah. But to what extent? You just guess. Eighteen percent. Eighteen. No, no, more than that. The national is eighteen. Yeah, more than that. Eighty percent. No, uh, you won't believe it, uh, it's 50%. Wow. wow. This is, I call good government. So you want to see whether the government is good or not? You see this one. Uh, whether it's good management or not? Whether they manage our money properly? This is how we can look at it. One of the ways to look at it. The performance of the government, state government. And the other thing is that you see whether the state government owes money to the federal government. Mm -hmm. The next thing, they don't owe a single cent to the federal government. Some of state has been reduced tremendously compared to the past government. All right. So they have made, uh, they have run the state government for ten years, right? In these past ten years, we have reduced the debt to the federal government. So it's very good. Therefore, I have confidence to say that you know, uh, under our economy now, under these two ministers, Wanning and Asmin, should be okay. And always supervised by Mahade, and always achieved the high performance. But we, we are talking facts and figures. Huh? So I have confidence that this country will be getting better. But of course, now we are quite disappointed. I also very disappointed. Uh, so, but uh, give them some time. Uh, at least they are honest so far, <laughs> and they are sincere, they are hardworking. Very hardworking. Dr. Mahade sleep four hours. One in sleep six hours a day, so I think they work very hard, really hard. You look at one in so tired uh, on the TV, you can see they really work hard.
So give them some chance. Yeah. Okay, so come back to this budget 2019. Uh, I have few surprises that mentioned earlier. But before we go to that, uh, when you read the budget, it's uh, so thick, you know, very hard to digest. Uh. Next time, when you read the, digest, uh, the, uh, the budget, you just look at these few things. Just these few things. Uh. Budget allocation, more than last year or not? Is it more than the previous year or less than previous year? If it is more, that means we are going to have more revenue. Right? Unless you have more revenue, then you can spend more. True or not? Okay. So when you have more money, you spend on operating expenditure and development expenditure. There are two, two types of expenditure. Operating expenditure include emoluments, the compensation for the government servants, the pensions for the retirees, fixed charges and grants. Fixed charges are the loans, servicing loan, uh, the interest they have paid, right? <clears throat> and the grants give to the incentive to our entrepreneurs. Uh, these two are fixed, right? And then supplies and services and purchase of assets and others. These are called operating expenditure. Development expenditure include health for building hospitals and clinics, building schools and universities, public work includes roads, ports, airports, others. So there are only two types. Okay. So if you are spending the money to develop the country, then we have a better prospect, right? If you spend the money just to maintain to employ the civil service, then the money is not well spent. So Mahathir has said that many times that we have over staff for the civil service. Right? If you try to cut down, but you're not. Just like you cannot dismiss your staff. So you have to go to the industrial court, they will also always tell you, you are allowed to hire, but not allowed to fire. Remember, don't quarrel with your staff. Because every time you go to the court, you're going to lose. You go to the arbitration, <laughs> you're going to lose. I thought that the trend is changing, right? The industrial court? I don't know. So far, my experience is very bitter. Private sector, not public sector. Private sector changing. Private sector was also always for the employee. I spent a lot of time in the industrial court. And in the past, it was basically also private sector employees, basically. But now, public sector is a is a century. So when you want to mis dismiss a staff, the best way is to ask him to resign. Yeah, correct. Negotiate with him privately. Correct. Compensate him what he wants, you know, and dismiss him. Yeah, but that comes under, ask him to send in resignation letter. Yeah, that comes under yeah. forced termination, though. It's yeah. also not foolproof. Uh, so, so long as you uh, enter into an MSS, yeah. it should be okay. Should be okay. On yeah. mutually agreed terms. But your uh, total liability. If they take you to the industrial court, it's 24 months plus every month. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Every one, one month per year. Of but, but that's still capped at 2024 20, total, right? 24 total, but one month for every year of service. So if he's been with you for 20 years, it's 44. 20 months. 20, 20 months yeah. plus 20, 24. 20 years plus 20 months. Oh, yeah. right. The best thing is talk to them nicely and right. persuade him to resign. Don't dismiss them. Right. Right. Don't sack them. Totally. Yeah. You are sure to lose one. Yeah. Uh, there is a catch here. <coughs> when you go to industrial court, you uh, 90 percent of the times uh, there is a statistics by someone who spoke about the human resource. Yes. Uh, if you go to industrial court, chances of 90 percent you will lose the court. Yeah. You will lose the case. But when you appeal, it's the other way around. 80 percent you will win. Mm -hmm. But, I, I the, think it's but then the process is terrible. Now. The process is terrible. No, but it's actually quite easy because uh, no. But each time you go, your entire company, but, half your management has to be there no, waiting. But, but that the changing now. But main thing lesson learned is you, your due process, your record must be kept. Yes, 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 yes. Performance yeah, records must be kept. The way you will lose one. But, but the cheapest way is to pull your balls and just pay them off. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, please carry on. Now. That is my experience. That is my advice. Right. Totally Don't sack yeah. them. Yeah. Ask them to resign right. themselves. That is the best. Easiest. Huh? Right. You save a lot of time and energy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, so this is expenditure. Huh? And, uh, the revenue, where do the money come from? The money comes from your direct tax and indirect tax. Okay? Direct tax include corporate tax, personal income tax, RPGT, and petronas. 
in the case of Malaysia, right? And indirect tax include excise duty, import, duty, import tax, export tax, custom duty, and stamp duty. It's indirect tax, okay? So Malaysia this time we have a larger allocation budget for 2019 compared to 2018. Why? That means we must have more revenue, right? So where do the money come from? This is interesting. This could blur, I can see it together later. Right? Now we have we have an uninterrupted deficit budget since 1998. Remember 1997, 1990 Asia financial crisis. So we have suffered a negative growth of 7.4 percent, right? After that, every year we are having a negative deficit. Budget. So that means 1998 <coughs> until now is 21 years, right? And we will not be able to break even until 2025. The previous government forecast to break even in 2020. The present government say not possible because of the huge debt incurred before. So we will take another another five additional five years. So 21 now already 21 years. All right, and up to 2025, another six years, right? So about 27 years altogether, you know, will be in deficit. So that is very serious. If you can't, if you can't imagine how serious it is, just imagine a person, an individual earning 5,000 ringgit per month, and your expenditure is 6,000 per month. So you need what a deficit of 1,000 per month. One year, 12,000. Short twelve thousand a year. That means you have to borrow from somewhere, right? Either from the bank or from your parents or from your friends, mm. right? And continuously for over twenty years. Imagine how serious it is, right? Plus interest, a capital plus interest. So it's very serious. So this is the kind of situation we are in now. Until twenty twenty five, only then we can break even. Okay. So. 2016, 17, 18, and 19, look at the total budget. Right? A huge increase, right? 314 compared to 280 billion ringgit. This is not much increase, this is a huge increase here. Operating expenditure, of course, you can't run away. Right? Operating expenditure, 30 odd percent go to the uh, government servants, salary, and the pension. You can't run away. The fixed uh, charges for the interest loans. So, this 54, 54 billion also cannot run away. Then the revenue increase from 239 to 261. Big jump here, right? We'll come to that later where we get money from. And deficit has been reduced from 3.7 to 3.8. This 3.8 is actually the former government's forecast that in 2018, the deficit will be 2.8%, but actually the present government calculator it should be 27 And next year, oh sorry, this year will be reduced to 3.4. So deficit decreased from 3.7 to 3.4. Okay. Development increased from 46 billion to 54 billion. Okay. Total budget increased from 280 billion to 314 billion. These are the surprises. Okay. Where did the money come from? how to cover revenue shortfall. According to budget 2019, the government plans to offset the loss of income due to the abolition of GST by significantly increasing its non-tax revenue, particularly in terms of investment returns on Petronas, Kazana, and Retirement Fund, DWAP. Now look at these three. 2018 is under the Barisan National, 2018 is under Pakatan Harapan, is a, a budget 2019 big increase. And the biggest increase is this part. This is investment. Okay. This is license and perfect. This is other non-tax. So biggest increase is investment from investment where? From Petronas, from Kazana, and also from the investment fund. Okay. The Petronas here. In 2018, the average petrol price is 60 US ringgit per barrel. 2018. 
in 2019 forecast to have 70 US dollars per barrel. So an increase of 10 US dollars per barrel. All right. Therefore, we should have more revenue from Petronas and more the dividends will be declared. So Petronas has already given uh, announced a special dividend uh, to the government of 30 billion last year. So government would have 30 billion extra income so that they can pay you back those that you have overpaid for GST. Right? I think almost everyone of you have overpaid. Mm. Alright? Either your corporate tax GST or what not. Mm. So they have already dragged on for two, three years, some of them. Huh? So they will pay you back in 2019. Money comes from where? From Petrona because of the oil price increase. Okay? So still short of 7 million only. But they will be able to cope with that. So in 2019, expect a return of fund from the government for your own thing. Yeah. Okay? Now, so in the whole year of 2019, expected the oil <coughs> price to increase to 70 US dollars. Therefore, Petronas will contribute more. All right. And then from Kazana, Kazana means GLC, government links company. Government invest in a lot of GLC companies, right? Okay, like for example, Maybank, okay, CIMB, okay, TNB, Telecom, and so on and so forth. All these few big companies, government has a share inside them, and all controlled by Kazana. Okay, so they expect these GLC companies to have a better return. How? Means better profit, therefore better dividends. How to generate better results? Are you aware now, maybe you are not, maybe you are aware, a lot of CEO, chairman of the companies has been removed. Why not? Why? Because these people, most of them are not qualified. They are there because they support Marisa National. Because they are Najib's friends. Okay, so they are there. Not only they are there, but they are also getting a very big pay. Okay. They don't deserve that. So what the government do, the first step is to dismiss 17,000 so-called political contractors. 17,000. In terms of number, very small. But in terms of compensation, the government pay them huge amount of money. Okay. Some of them, like for example, what, uh, CIMB's uh, chairman, yeah. Nasir, uh, no, he's paid. I think one day is 27,000 something. Oh, one day. You know. So you don't have to pay a bank CEO or, or, or chairman that kind of money. You don't have to. I think the OPIA also don't get that kind of salary. So overpay because of his relationship with our prime minister. So he has to be. And he, he, he has left the office now. So someone will be appointed. Someone more capable by Mr. Hay will be there to replace Nasir. Wow. Yeah. Hey. Wow. <laughs> the government do not have to pay 27,000 a day to Mr. Hay. Money. Probably 10,000 a day. Wow. wow. One day, no, 10,000. You work 10,000 a day. 10, 000, a day. Okay. okay, good, good. Happy with fun. <laughs> And then the CEO may also have to go, all right, and will replace with another guy. Lower pay, more capable, more qualified, more experienced. So with this kind of changing of uh, senior staff, uh, they hope that the banks can, uh, not just the bank, GLCs, all the GLC can perform better. Okay. Once this is changed, the, the companies are all better managed, so they will generate better profit. And therefore, government will get more dividend. All right. So this is what what it means. And retirement fund, huge fund. I don't know how many billions they have there, but also not properly managed, not properly invested. Money is not properly invested. So the return is not working. But once you change the people there, the management team, the the management will be better. 
they can come over better, and therefore, better dividends for the government. That is why they forecast a very <coughs> high increase in the in investment area. All right. So that is where the money is going to come from. Some people are still skeptical because by changing the management team, Mr. Heng go there, everything is new, he has to restructure inside. He has to do a lot of things slowly, and only then maybe the performance of that company organization will be better. So it takes time, not immediately. So some people are still skeptical whether they can achieve this target now. Okay? But this is what <coughs> they are going to do. Alright? Government also in this uh, budget introduced three very powerful measures. Number one is Fiscal Responsibility Act. New Act in 2021, a little bit slow. I just hope that it can be by next year you now we can have the Act. But then it will be in 2021 to prevent uncontrolled spending causing super debts. You remember just last few days, a uh, Chinese uh, government's uh, Ministry of Tourism appointed a so-called promotion boss chairman, Dr. Xiu. Remember, he was charged in court because of uh, approving some 99 million, 99 million expenditure uh, uh, in the last two few days before change of government. Uh, so he was caught. So these kind of people sit there. Not because they are good. He is not suitable to be there because he is an industrialist. He is the MD of NIDEC. Okay, he is not, he knows nothing about tourism. But just because of his relationship with PM, with Rosma, he is there. He is full time MD, you know, of NIDEC. You know. So he is there and he just simply spend the money. Nobody will credit him. <coughs> Even the minister dare not to credit him. Because his boss is not him. Okay, so kind of things like this uh, has been misappropriated. But now, from now onwards, they are going to have this act. Even before this act is enacted, uh, it's proof already people are scared already. Uh, these are the examples. Uh, the government wants to teach the government servants don't do hanky panky things. So when this is introduced, nobody can simply spend the government's money. Let's look at the diamond picture there or? Oh, yes, correct. This is diamond. Look at the diamond. Yeah, rose my one. Pink in color. Pink. Yeah, pink in color. <coughs> okay. Okay. Like pink. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the other one is the procurement act. Yeah. Previously, government can just, you, you can see from the Auditor General's report, the annual report, right? They buy things without open tender. Uh, even unnecessarily, right? And the things you bought and then keep in the store, not <coughs> used. By the time you want to use, already spun, so you have to repair again. And the price that they pay is too high. For example, a clock. Okay, they pay uh, 300 and 350 ringgit one clock, you know. That one if you buy in China, uh, in Bak, uh, probably only 37 Malaysian and uh, 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 you know. So, this kind of risk appropriation of public fund should be stopped and will be stopped once this act is introduced. Okay. So in the future, all public procurement has to be open, has to be transparent, okay, by open tender. If anyone will supply anything, either goods, products, or services to the government, remember this is the act going to protect you. If they still go through the private negotiation, then you can complain. Okay. You can complain. So this is going to reduce a lot of unnecessary expenditure. So not only just to increase the revenue by way of investment, but also to curb all unnecessary expenditures. Right. The third one is set up an office in the Ministry of Finance, so National Debt Management Office. This is to review and to manage the government debts and liabilities and monitor new debt insurance. Previously, when we have no money, we just issue bonds, okay, and uh, get the money. Then the government has to pay the debt, pay the interest, right? So now, no more. Why do you make that? 
you can go through. You have to go through properly to see whether you justify or not. At least to control. Therefore, I think it would be better. Previously, you see the auditor report and you you hardly see any public servant being penalized. No, right? So far, only one government servant because of wrongdoing transferred from one department to another. So far, only one. And you see the report there, how many ministries, how many departments, heads of government departments making mistakes, okay? Misappropriate our fund, up to billions of ringgit. No exception to them. Because no, act, no proper act to penalize them. So now, no more. Okay. And they weren't retrospects. They weren't, they weren't bringing the act in the retrospect of crime. It's from this point moving forward. Yes. 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 No, no, which was not. It's really do. Yeah. So, okay, after we have seen this, we know the world economy situation is not very good, all right? Most of the countries reduce by 1% or so, right? Globally, it's like that. For ASEAN countries, still could be okay. Still okay. For Malaysia, we look at the past performance and we view and we know that we have some problems. We have uh, very high debt. We have high household debt. We have overstaffed civil service. We have foreign, too many foreign workers, right? And we also suffering from brain drain. So these are the five major problems that we are facing. And our new budget with the new government, new budget, we see some light at the end of the tunnel, okay? But long term, how about long term? So our economic outlook. Okay. Again, although our revenue uh, has uh, less and less dependent on the oil, on crude oil price, from 40% reduced to currently 20%. Okay, our dependence on our income of uh, crude oil has reduced from 40% to 20%. Still, 20% is very big amount of money. So crude oil is very critical to us. Whether we can achieve whether we can get 70 US dollars per barrel or not in 2019 is very important to us. So crude oil is number one. We want to see whether this can achieve or not. Look at this. Uh. In October last year, 15, the price went up to over 80 ringgit, uh, sorry, US dollar per barrel. For short one, okay. And then it come down very drastically. And during this time, before October 15, we were doing our planning for our budget, right? Yeah. And look at this. During our this time when we are doing the budget planning here, yeah, it is all above 70 ringgit, uh, US dollars, right now. Yeah, here, this area. Before the announcement of the budget, we prepare our budget. Okay, during that time. Every day is above 70 US dollars. Therefore, it's very comfortable, very, very safe to check at 70 US dollars per barrel for 2019. But who knows after the announcement, the price come down. So that's very rapidly. Yeah, very rapidly. In happen. a very short period of time. Okay. <coughs> then what happened? Then it come up again slowly. Right? This is generally the fall. Go up again. To 50 something. Yesterday's price I think is exceeding 60, about 60 US dollars. 60 and 70 still got ten dollars gap there. Right? Hopefully it still can continue. Right. Uh, this was forecast in October that 2019 may achieve 70 US is because in December, on the 6th, the 6th of December, OPEC was having a meeting. The meeting is to discuss, to reduce production. So all the OPEC members reduce the production. Once you reduce, the price will go up, right? 
but they didn't expect that it to come down in December. All right. Now we have another meeting in June. OPEC is going to have another meeting in June. They will again discuss and to review. If the price still below the price that they want, they may reduce further. So the December 6 meeting is very successful because every member agreed to reduce the production. Some even reduce more than they promised. For example, Saudi Arabia, the number one exporter of crude oil. They reduce more than they agreed. All right? So in my right is yeah, yes. Did Malaysia reduce as well? Was Malaysia uh, part we, of that discussion? Uh, uh, yeah, we reduced, but I was very small compared to the other members. So we also reduced a bit. Of course. We then it must, uh, must affect our budget too. Um, yes, correct, yes, but very marginally. You know? in, in our case, we are very small compared to Saudi Arabia and the other, very small. But uh, 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 Russia also agreed. Russia is non member, but they also agreed to reduce. Very important. Uh, Russia must agree. Iran and so on and so on, so forth. Uh, this is a very critical time. Whether they would continue at this level or move upward, very important. Otherwise, they may have another earlier meeting before June. June is the fixed time for their meeting. Uh, if they drop too much, you know, although they have reduced the production and yet price still going down, then they may call an emergency meeting to review again. Okay. So we have to watch the petrol price, whether up or down, whether above 70 or below 70. If it is below 50, then the government would have to revise the budget. Okay, if it is reduced until 50 or below 50, government have to revise, have to cut certain expenditure. Otherwise, we will suffer a bigger uh, deficit budget. Okay, palm oil is another one that we export, one of our major exports. Right? Palm oil also dropping. Yeah, also dropping. Uh, December is the lowest in 2018. The price, the fresh fruit bunch, uh, FFB, dropped to 285. The height is 600, 400, 500. Okay. December go down to 285. But lucky in January, this month go up again to 350. Alright, January go up. But still very low compared <coughs> to the previous time. Still very low. So oil pump we consider also low uh, in the 20. It's in pump oil price that increased to 2,148 ringgit per metric ton on the 15th of October, from 2,113 in the previous trading day. Historically, palm oil reached an all-time high of 4,298 from March 2008. That's a Those were the 2008. Days. That's an all-time high. And all-time all low is 433 wow. in March of 86. Sorry. Remember, <laughs> remember we say Malaysia suffered three <laughs> recession? Yes. This is so this is one, the first one. We call it global commodity crisis. When all the commodity prices drop, so Malaysia is one of them, they suffer that. Because our oil palm dropped to 433. <coughs> Bring it per metric ton in 1986. Okay. So palm oil is slow one now. And I don't think it will go up in the near future. Reason is because Europe has announced officially mm. that from 2020 yeah. they will not buy uh, oil palm oil. 2020. Okay. Completely stop. Alright. They will not use our palm oil to generate diesel as well, biodiesel, so no more. But of course, they are doing, trying very hard to convince them you now to, to buy. Uh, their, their main reason is environmental. Ah uh, yes, they say it's not sustainable. Okay, they say spoil our environment. Political. So, so that is political. The reason. So uh, they say they want to go for soya. Yeah, so, yeah. So, they want to protect yeah. their own oil. They're protecting the soya. Okay, cronism. But when Mahathir reaches China, China promised to import more from Malaysia, 500,000 tons from Malaysia. But with a class a qualification saying that provided your price is competitive, 
<laughs> okay, our competitor is Indonesia. Indonesia is now number one oil palm oil, uh, palm oil exporter. We are number two. Previously, we are number one. Now we are number two. Okay, and our price now is more expensive than Indonesia. Okay, we are about 20 <coughs> US dollars per metric ton higher than Indonesia. So China has not bought anything from us after uh, Mahathir's visit. Okay, and also they will not do, they will not buy from us because Mahathir has said a lot of things that they are not happy, uh, especially about the uh, uh, forest city, okay, <laughs> about the East Coast Ring uh, link, rail link, uh, about the gas pipeline from mm. the Sabah to Malacca, all these cancer. All these are China construction uh, projects. <coughs> so China would not uh, buy from us or increase the purchase for the time being, at least for the time being, until such time that we patch up with them, uh, improve the relationship, or until such time that Mahathir stepped down, Anwar took over. So during the past few months, uh, Anwar has been doing something trying to catch up with China. He visited China, okay? Because he's not a government servant now. He's not a minister, so we cannot meet the, the ministers. Okay, he meet the uh, political parties' leaders, all right? But I know that he has <coughs> finally met some of the leaders in China, and the response is quite good. Okay, <coughs> quite good. Right. They have quite a amicable <coughs> meeting. So hopefully, uh, if uh, Mahathir is stepped down, then the relationship can improve. However, uh, uh, of course, uh, Tun Dr. Mahathir has been advised uh, from many different sectors, right, including our Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we also told him that China is too important to be ignored. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the meeting, I advised him, <laughs> very, very sarcastic, uh, I asked him, I said, Doctor, I think you have not been to China for many years already. He said, yeah, about 10 years. I said, high time you have to go there and have a look. Because they are very different now. <laughs> so he, he, he went and uh, he, he took the trouble to visit Alibaba, the, the GD uh, car manufacturer. Uh, they took, he took the, the speed train. I told him a lot about the, the speed train, high speed train. I go there and travel. I told him, you put a coin there and it will not fall when the, the train is running. I heard he tried that when he was there. Someone told me he tried that, you know. He was very impressed. So, uh, lately, when Shin Ju had an in, uh, exclusive interview with him, he said that, no, I, I am not anti-China. Uh, in fact, I'm very pro-China. He said, uh, in many occasions at the public forum, even overseas public forums, I say China is our good friend. Uh, we are very close with China. So hopefully all these things will improve the relationship. Uh, not too long ago, we also had a meeting with the foreign minister. <coughs> the foreign minister, Sai Kudin, also briefed us that they, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, China and Malaysia, uh, have laid up a lot of activities, exchange programs uh, between these two countries in 2019, because this is our 45th 45th anniversary of the government type in China. So there will be a lot of activities and functions to be held. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, with all these activities here can improve uh, the relationship. Because they have already cut off totally uh, the official FDI uh, from China to Malaysia. Uh, they also have reduced uh, intentionally or uh, unintentionally, we don't know, but the number of outbound tourists from China to Malaysia also reduced by 30%. 30%. China tourism is very important to us and so to other countries. So in US, for example, in UK, you know they issue the visa to Chinese tourists uh, 10 years now. Uh, once you issue, it's valid for 10 years. I think Australia also the same. All right, 10 years for multiple entries. Why they have to do that? Because not only in terms of quantity, Every year, they have 160 million outbound tourists go out. And it is increasing, double-digit increasing. 
the total number of visitors from China was 160 million, imagine. And every one of them spent averagely 672 US dollars. Times four, how much? 2,000 something. 2000. The highest spender in the world. US, 500 something more. The world average, only 424. China is 635. Every visitor, every hour, you know. And you times 160 million, you see. That is why it's important. That's why Hong, uh, Hong Kong, you try to be nasty, you then stop. Then you get into trouble. Straight away. Taiwan, same thing. So you can't ignore them. They just do you. They just got the money to spend. And they dare to spend. The funny thing is that, you know, they may not be the richest uh, in terms of personal income. In fact, they rank number 78 in the world. Uh. 78 uh, in the world, <coughs> the capital income. Right. USA is the top, Japan, all these, Qatar, uh, uh, Luxembourg, all these are Singapore, all these are top personal income countries. China is 78, ranked 78. Not by GDP, uh, by PPP, purchasing power parity. If it is by gross uh, 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 income, rank about 100, China. So imagine, but their spending power is the highest in the world. Okay, and every year is increasing because now they open up. China opened up. Previously, they are allowed to visit only a few ASEAN countries. Now they can go almost everywhere. And in the world, about fifty countries allow the Chinese visitors to go in without visa. Fifty countries. UK, USA, 10 years valid visa for multiple entries. Okay, Thailand, go there on arrival. You apply on arrival. Visa issued on arrival. Thailand. So, Thailand in 2018, 2018, they have already celebrated 10 million visitors from China. You know how many is Malaysia? We are struggling to achieve. 3 million, but we fear. We got only 2.25 million. You know, you go to the airport, uh, uh, especially when you see people uh, uh, claim their GST back, uh, it's 99% more than the Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We welcome Middle East. We welcome Middle East more. Okay. So, everything you do in tourism, you have to think of China, like my project. I'm thinking of China. My main target. So I'm waiting for a Chinese party to join venture with me. Without them, you cannot. 255 acres. So how to accommodate? How to fill the rooms? But well, now this Chinese investor are allowed to invest in uh, Malaysia. Uh, they are not encouraged to invest. Now, of course, they are not encouraged. Of course not. And not only uh, number one. Generally, uh, China government has stopped them from investing outside because a lot of people siphon out their fund. Okay, that's number one. Number two, <clears throat> private sector also do not want to come. I almost signed with one China party to join with with me for my project. They delayed, they deferred, I think we sent them out to cancellation, the joint venture project. <coughs> almost signed already. That's <laughs> on the first of signing. <coughs> then after they listen to Dr. Mahade say, oh, he said, please, uh, hold on first. <laughs> but I was, I was told that uh, investment-wise, they just, uh, yeah. China still prefer Malaysia as uh, a... You know, definitely, but not now. Yes, definitely, but not now. Now, now they, they, are, they are holding the horse now. Yeah. They, they want to see yeah. what happens next. Okay. So, so we are suffering. So, never mind. Let's see things may improve uh, in the future. Uh, because you simply cannot ignore them. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I may be a little bit chauvinistic. Uh, but it's true fact. Because I am the vice president of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce, the Malaysian <coughs> Chinese Chamber of Commerce. I keep in constant contact with all the world of Chinese from China. <coughs> every year we receive, uh, every year we receive 170 
groups of people from China. Oh. Yeah. And they are either the representative from the government, central government, or, or, or state government, okay, or the city government, or, yeah, or private institutions. You know, we, we keep in touch with them. So we, we know, we know their feeling. We know very well. So we dare to tell Madre, this is the, the, the feedback we have. So very bad. Uh, for the time being, I'm uh, still very bad. Yeah, but why did so, he make an uncalled for statement during the press conference? I think it's his, uh, I think it's his uh, strategy, Mate's strategy. But I think he doesn't know Chinese mentality and he doesn't know Chinese culture. When you deal with China, you don't show your muscle. Very important. Okay, you don't show your muscle. Yet. To them, I think. Even USA, they don't, they're not scared. Even like this, US. A war trip for them. Yeah. They have all kinds of strategy and they offset all the problems. I have another talk on the 18, I think, the US, uh, US China trade war uh, uh, impact on the uh, uh, global economy. So I look, study this subject and I see how I know chi how Chinese react, how they retaliate. They may appear to be soft, you know, but deep in their heart, they are very strong. They are too good. Yeah. So, yes, sorry. Part, part of the I think part of the thing is the rebound. Yeah. But I did that because you know this was still done by this government. Magic did all these things. Yeah, true. So he has to undo it. True. Yeah, yeah, but it's not a matter of China, but he has to politically he has to be seen to be to be coupling all these skills. Yeah. <coughs> the statement he makes as well as China is like uh how say like in the past where the Western country were in, uh, how to say, uh, what was the word he used? Like colonization. Colonization. Right. Right. Yeah. So he implies that China is not yeah. So that, that one actually, uh, he's, he's the leader. Yeah, because he's yeah, the press conference. But, 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 but then, then, but then, 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 then he said that is not no, part no, of the... Uh, but that is one of these now, even with eating with Gelsitran. He did that intentionally. Yeah. This guy is a master strategist. He does that huh, just to have a cause, a reason to say, okay, now we have uh, Whether it's good or not, we do not yeah. know. But, but what girl is saying is that long term, not so good. Not so good. Yeah. Okay, alright, let's continue. Eh? Okay. Rubber is even worse. Rubber is oversupplied until 2023. <laughs> Brazil Rubber Board is expecting rubber prices to remain relatively low ahead of an expected oversupply sure. until. Oversupply because of Malaysia or other countries? No, I think because of the uh, synthetic rubber. You know. uh, substitute. Yeah, okay. the substitute of the synthetic rubber. That is the main reason. Actually, we are using more and more rubber. But then, the synthetic rubber replaces natural rubber more and more. You know. So, our glove is still doing very well, but we, we don't use a lot of rubber, natural rubber. right? So it's oversupply now, until 2023. Okay. We don't know what will happen after this. Okay. <laughs> so number one, oil price, uncertain, right? Two, palm oil going down, rubber is going down. Never mind. We got other things to cover up. Huh? Now manufacturing PMI, now as it is now, you see uh, that the Malaysia manufacturing PMI, that's purchasing managers index, this is a one very good indicator, important indicator to, to measure your economy. Okay, if people don't buy from you, that means you are not doing well, right? If people buy from you, then you will be okay. So, but the purchasing managers index is going down. See from the height here, from the height here. This is September, September 2018, then go down. It's not only Malaysia, no. the whole world is like that, chasing managers index going down. This is the balance of uh, trade. Balance of trade means we sell, we export, we also buy, we import, right? So when we import less than what we export, that is the plus, this balance of trade. So we are very lucky that since 1997 onwards, every month, we are enjoying a surplus of trade. That means we export more. We import less. Okay? So this is good. But however, the, the gap is narrowing now. Alright? The, the market is getting smaller and smaller. Uh, 
So like for example, this month, it's very low, right? And now it's also coming down. When we do not enjoy this supply, balance of trade, then we'll get in trouble. Coupled with our big, huge national debt and household debt, then our economy will go into trouble. But so far, so good. So far, so good. Since 1998, January onwards, every month, we are enjoying the surplus. Okay, means we export more. Right? Now, bank's load is another area we can judge, we can measure, and see whether our economy is healthy or not. Now, you see that in 2020, 2010, and 2011, our growth for Loan is 16, more than 16 percent, close to 17 percent. But now it drops to about 6 percent only. This is the lowest in the past few years, after 2015. So this is a very critical year, 2014. Huh? After 14, after 2014, the loan, the bank loan, go down. Right. So 2018 is only more, slightly more than 6 percent. 2019 is forecast to be lower than 2018. So that means people are not doing business. People don't want to expand their business. Therefore, you get less and less load, right? So in the past four years, it's going down. Now, this is a bad sign, right? So you feel it already. Everyone is feeling it that the economy is not so vibrant like before, right? You feel it, especially this year. You feel it. So World Bank say Malaysia GDP to grow only 4.7 in 2019 and go down further to 4.6 in 2020. <coughs> World Bank. In the early part of 2018, as last year, World Bank say we probably can maintain at 5. Okay, but now they say we can only have 4.7 or 4.6. So that's the same. IMF cut its 2018 GDP forecast for the world, euro area, and emerging markets. So this is uh, this is July forecast. Eh? Only after a few months, four months, reduced for the world from 3.9 to 3.7, US maintained 2.9, Euro from 2.2 to 2, China 6.6 .6 to 6.6, .6, still below the same. So US and China, although they have a trade war, but still they maintain the growth. Emerging market 4.9 to 4.7. So in other words, the forecast is that for the they, they already can see that uh, in October, the market is slowing down. Yeah. Okay, I might I as well tell you uh, this morning only uh, I got this information. You know the trade war between US and China? Uh, do you know that China trade with USA still increased? Okay, still increased. The total export and total import with USA still increased, despite of 2018 trade war. The trade war started in January 2018. So actually, the whole year in 2018 should expect the trade to reduce, but. Instead of reducing, it is increasing. For export, increased by 17%. So the trade surplus for China with USA <coughs> increasing even more than we want. Okay. Is it on specific uh, industries? Total. No, no, total, total. Yeah. Can't believe it, isn't it? Yeah. You know why? You know how? Since we see for some time. Number one, China, you remember last year, the GDP depreciating? Yeah. Right, so, okay. You increase the tariff by 25%. Number one, I reduce the value of my currency by 10%. So, different by 10%. All right, so it's left 15%. The other 15%, I give them so called export incentive. Another 10%. So, 20%. Set off already, right? left 5%. China's products go to USA 5%, nothing, because they are too cheap. Still, you impose another additional fiber, still cheapest. Nobody can compete. That is why no, no impact at all. 
You get it? One, depreciate currency. Two, give the exporter an incentive. And don't forget, most of the exporters are so called uh, uh, national owned enterprises. Government belongs to government. But it is, their system and ours is different. Right? They still have a lot of big companies belongs to the government. 100% belongs to the government. So never mind what this pocket gives to this pocket. Doesn't make any difference, right? This is how China can do it. And they can do it overnight. Xi Jinping sit here, and there are another six members here. Wait, I suggest to do this. Do you agree? You dare to say no? <laughs> right now, the simple as that seven people decide everything. In the USA, Donald Trump so strong, so powerful, huh? the deal cannot pass. So certain department of government, <coughs> oh, 800,000 government servants suffer, suffer. No salary, no gaji. Imagine. Because the Senate is not controlled by them. The Senate is controlled by the Democrats. So they cannot pass the deal. So no money. No money close the government department. China is different. Today they call the meeting, tomorrow they implement the deal. Very fast. So different system. So 100%, as China say, total 100% democracy is also bad. No democracy, also bad. Also bad, yeah. So, okay, now come back to this one. So you can see that the forecasts are for 2019 are <coughs> not very promising. Not very global economy, this is a, a global economy may be slowing more than expected. Dagger then says, right, he says that recent data suggest greater slowdown than top last month. Between last month and this month. You have to change your mindset already. It's already, it, it should be slower than what we think. And IMF chief urges countries to roll back recent import tariffs. Call off. Shouldn't have the trade war. But I don't think uh, Donald Trump will withdraw. Although they have a very amicable discussions now between China and USA, uh, they end up <coughs> uh, originally scheduled for two days. They extend one day to three days negotiation in Beijing. All right, uh, end up quite happy. Uh, they may have a temporary tools, but I don't think you will solve the problem. You won't. The problem will be there. How about 2019? <clears throat> Global economy. Uh, this is the chief economist as, as strategies of a uh, Germany bank. He said we forecast global growth to slow in 2019, and dollar looks set to weaken the U.S. interest rate picking in year. <clears throat> Our forecast is for global economic growth to slow down to 2.9 in 2019, from an estimated 3.3. In 2018. So you measure 3.3 .3 to 2.9. Big change. Yeah? This is below consensus of 3.1 and largely reflects our more pessimistic view on the US. We see US GDP growth at 2.4 in 2019 as the boost from tax cuts fit. While interest rates move higher and the effects of a prolonged trade war with China are felt. Right. While the recent 90 days truth is welcome. Not as a piece of his work on. We remain we remain skeptical on the prospects for a long term agreement on issues such as intellectual property rights. We see a further slowdown in global growth 2.5 or 20. So imagine now from 3.3 3 to 2.9 in 2019 and 2020 2.5. So as I say, 2019, 2020, that's a mistake. I'm not for Malaysia. These two years will be quite difficult. <coughs> Losing some steam, right? This is also interesting. For this is for twenty one for 2018, 2019 red one, 2020 blue one, 2021 green one. This is the world, US, Euro and China. Now you see that the world is slightly lower in 2019 and go down further in 2020. 
2021 hold at the same level as 2020. USA is going down from 18, 19, 20, 21. Going down every year. Okay. Likewise, China also, because of the trade war, so okay, same thing, going down. Europe, same thing, going down. So almost <coughs> everywhere in the world for 2019 and 2020 is not, is not optimistic. <coughs> So the end, we, at the end, we say, then how about Malaysia? We come to a conclusion. The black one and the red one, the difference is, the, red, the black one is a forecast by all these organizations in 2018. <coughs> all right? This is second part. This is the <coughs> latest, latest uh, forecast. IMF in 2018, Forecast that Malaysia would achieve 5 to 5.5 percent growth as Malaysia government budget suggested. Same thing, 5 to 5.5. World Bank also very positive, 5.2. OCBC, OB also 5 percent. So that is early part of 2018. Later part of 2018, World Bank anticipated Malaysia unable to maintain 5 percent. 5%. Right. Earlier, you saw one slide that we had already discussed that we can achieve only 4.7. Right. So from 5.2 to 5 to 4.7. So it's dropping every quarter. And MIER predicted Malaysian economic growth in 2018 and 19 to slow down at 4.7 4.5 respectively. Normally, MIER are forecasting a growth <coughs> slightly higher than the market expectation normally but this year is below our expectation you know what is MIER? Right? yeah we are they are our partner right yeah, because which is partner CEO say we business yes. partner yeah. no we have the confidence index yeah, that's uh, right. we partner with MIER yeah. MIER yeah. stands for Malaysia Institute of Economic Research but they know this is government subsidized institution all right, so they are normally a little bit more on the high side. But this year, I don't know why. They reduced to just 4.7 or 4.5. I think this is very realistic. Mm -hmm. realistic. Normally, they are not accurate. <laughs> Their forecast is always a bit higher. All right, but this year, I think they are closer uh, closer to the true fact. Right? Maybe stage three <laughs> over. <laughs> okay. So just for your information, uh, we, we uh, which stage MIER has this confidence index research, right, a survey. And now I propose to them to have another party there that is, uh, that is which stage, MIER and Huazong. Huazong is a Malaysia, uh, sorry, Federation of Malaysia Associations of Malaysia. In Chinese, it's Huazong. Okay, so three parties together, we are having a joint uh, venture to do a survey, a half yearly survey. Same thing, confidence index survey. Okay, but this one, the difference is that the, C, the CEO uh, is the confidence index uh, with this stage uh, more concentrated on the CEO of English speaking community. They want to one will be Chinese. So the combination of these three will be a very perfect one. So they have accepted my, my proposal. So we are going to start. First, please complain. Huh? Oh, oh, please please complain. Yeah. Make it a strong yeah. index for all of them. Yeah. What is your response rate? Why, why? They all are, you know. It's not very good. Oh, oh, actually, they are good. Uh, some, some. PC. PC, oh, 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 yes, they are CEO. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, my group, uh, I tell you. Uh, my group, uh, 100% uh, of the four quarters. You know how I did it? You know how I did it? Okay. I, I asked the which state secretary to tell me who didn't respond. Who did not respond, let me know, then I tackle them in this week. You use my turn now. Uh, so, 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 you know, <laughs> so you know who is not responding and you call them A. Uh, because, uh, no, no, you are not 100% at last 100%? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so MIDR is because 4.0 or 4.5. So it's very low, right? Compared 
compared to the government's expectation of 5 to 5.5, right, we've been noting actually 4.7 points. <coughs> now, the conclusion is this. After, yeah, after we have gone through the global economy, regional economy, then we come to Malaysia's uh, problems, right, come to the budget, then what about our economy's forecast? And what is the overall general view? Is this global economy is facing various challenges in the next two years, and the economic growth will be negatively affected. This one, why we say various challenges? Number one, of course, the U.S. China trade war. Okay, this one very major one. It may not affect China or U.S.A. so much. But psychologically, they affect the whole world, not the emotions. People always think that oh, this is going to be very dangerous, very bad. Uh, everyone will go down. And over 100 countries uh, are China's and USA's trading, number one trading partner. So when this number one and number two fighting, definitely we are going to suffer. That's why everyone has no confidence. So the whole thing is affected, right? So the war is number one. Number two is a job political reason in the Middle East, right? And internally for USA, also a lot of problem. I think Donald Trump made a very big mistake. He said to declare war with everyone, including his own <laughs> friend, Canada. His closest friend, Canada. His largest trading partner. Okay, next one is neighbor, Mexico. He built the wall, now you got into trouble. The Senate refused to pay the bill. Okay? He also declared war with you. He also declared war with his good friend, Japan and South, uh, South, South Korea. Everyone, that is his biggest mistake. Right? So there is no peace, no. So China took the advantage. Finally, developed the country. Then, I think 2030, you can celebrate that China become the world number one. Can't be helped because they are too involved. But one thing Donald Trump did correctly is that they don't involve in war directly now. Okay? If they want to fight, if you want to fight, I will support you. Don't worry, you want to fight, I support you. This is something smart. Okay? They spent billions and billions of dollars. Huh? In the war, uh, in my next talk, I will mention this uh, all the figures. Okay? So, uh, this is something he did rightly, <coughs> but wrongly to declare, to declare war with everyone, even with China. Very wrong. Miscalculation you know, of Chinese strength. Yeah. So, number two, however, ASEAN, so we are in ASEAN countries, so ASEAN as a whole, uh, as a whole, will still enjoy a moderate increase. Let, let me tell you a little bit more about ASEAN as a whole. China is number one investor in Singapore among the 10 ASEAN countries. Okay. Without cancellation of all those major projects in Malaysia, we are number two. We were number two. Now after this, I don't know, maybe we are number four. Okay. So number one, FDI. Uh, attract most FDI from China is Singapore. All right. Trading countries is no more Malaysia. We were the largest trading partner with China before 2017. Now we are number two. Overtook by Vietnam. So Vietnam is now the largest trading partner with China. All right. Last year, 2018, the trade between China and Vietnam increased by 28%. We are not bad now. Nah. Our trade with China increased 15%. But imagine now, Vietnam and China is 28%. So that's a big difference. So they overtook us. So they are number one trading partner with China now. Okay. The highest growth rate in terms of FDI is Philippines. <coughs> I told you earlier, it's 80 times more. But of course, the base is very small. Okay. Before that, in 2017, China investment in Philippines only five billion, very small. So suddenly jump up eighty times. 
So that's the first thing. So uh, that gives you some idea. Uh, you uh, in in ASEAN countries, okay, Singapore attract most FDI from China. Vietnam become their largest trading partner. Okay, uh, Philippines attract the increase in the FDI, the highest growth rate. Uh, uh, Thailand, I forgot to mention Thailand. Thailand attract most of their outbound visitors. Okay, last year December. Celebrated achieving 10 million visitors from China. You imagine that times two, 2000, uh, sorry, two, uh, 765 US dollars per visitor. And then you convert it to Thai dollar, uh, Thai part. You see how much. So it's very important to, to Thailand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Customs also have a special link for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Special link. And, and they can price. just apply their visa yeah, China, on the right side. Yeah. Uh, when you say when you say uh, Singapore attracted the most FDR from China, yeah, total, total. Uh, what kind of investment they're looking for? Oh, they they, are, they are yeah. normally invest in more high tech business. In in Singapore. In well? Singapore, yes, in Singapore. High tech. Petroleum related products. More on services, I believe. Sorry. More on services, not so much on uh, factories. Right? S services industry. Uh, more. Uh, yeah. Okay. In, more in, in in other countries, uh, they would uh, look into uh, raw material. <coughs> Where you have cheap raw material, yeah. uh, they invest in uh, Cambodia, for example, more for infrastructure. All the highway uh, is built by China. Formerly is by Japan, now overtake by by China. Yeah. And in Vietnam, trading, manufacturing. In in Thailand, uh, agriculture. So financial services. So, yeah. In Malaysia, originally they still can come here for infrastructure. A lot of infrastructure they can do, huh? but now cancer, Shaya. <laughs> Especially the East Coast railing, huh? that one I think is very important. Is that so? Yeah, very important. 60 billion for the rail? I thought it's a white elephant. 60 yeah, billion yeah, yeah. for yeah, white yeah. elephant. I forgot to qualify saying the that is not right. politically, yeah. very important for Barisan, yeah. uh, Karapan. I told Mahade, I told Saifuddin. But, but I said, I'm sorry, I'm not a politician, but, but I know it's, it's very important for you to build this railway yeah, because yeah. once you build the railway, you uplift yeah. the standard of the exactly. late economy. And they will support you. I say, you you know very well, you don't even get a parliamentary seat in Terengganu and Kelantan. The whole Barisan Harapan don't have, even have one parliamentary seat. But our way is not there. What do you want to build? Our way is not there. Don't talk about our way. Talk yeah. about economic development. Yeah. The ROI, ROI is all contrived. It's too, when your ROI is you pay to such a big figure divided by your output, of course your ROI is not there. Yeah. But the intention of economic development is good. That's why China is so good. Yeah. You know what? So, I mean, yes. India, China built the infrastructure first. They can give villages to the town, town to the villages, they do the trade. And because of that, China grew. That's what in we China, do. No, we don't have enough population in Trangano to justify the white elephant. But the white elephant. population will spread. Will spread. It doesn't urbanize. It's yeah. spread out. You got to balance. You got to balance the population. China is damn smart. They point. build infrastructure first. India cannot build city, and so, they get stuck. Last the time, our North South Highway also is. Uh, yeah. The Penang Bridge also same. Uh. Exactly. It's all not uh, uh, ROI one. No, Malaysia, right, even achieve, you see, even, you, even, sorry, even our North South Highway, yeah, yeah, can yeah, achieve, yeah, yeah, the yeah. ROI, yeah. but we grew. After you build, then you will generate uh, the exactly. Uh, so I achieved right, you know, during the 15 years ago. Okay, I agree. So China, the ROI. So if you, you don't know, agree, then let me tell you. Because it's right. Let me tell you what Deng Xiaoping said. Deng Xiaoping said, Yao Zi Fu, Xian Zuo Lu. Infrastructure. Yeah. 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 The good thing which was spoiled because of political, basically, mm. all this uh, genetic, mm. it's a good thing because it's right. Yeah, I agree, but what you that they could have negotiated the amount because the amount just... Yeah. The amount was balloon. Yeah, the amount was tainted already. It smelled already. Maybe half of the price. It was tainted already. Yeah. It smelled. 
buy one should be half of the price. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They want a lot of under counter. Some people say no, no. you know what? It's a it's a cross, you know. A cross, they say. Because you haven't built a cross yet, you built the North South Highway. Malaysia developed over the last twenty years. Uh, no, Taiwan, we have 15 also, minutes to yeah, okay. Taiwan also the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Mr. So Kirk, we have 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah. 15, huh? One five, that's Oh, more than enough. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, number three. Three. <laughs> so there as a whole, uh, ASEAN countries will be okay. Uh, we have our strength, uh, but other countries have their own strength. For example, our weakness is shortage of workers. Hmm. So you cannot come here, move your factory labor, intensive factory here, but you can go to Vietnam. You can go to Thailand, you can go to Indonesia, right? So if you want to build roads and highway and so on, go to Cambodia, Laos, all these, they are very poor. You don't have money, you can help them, yeah. So China will be pumping a lot of money into ASEAN countries, not so uh, for Malaysia yet. Yeah, hopefully they will come also later on, like before. Okay, number three is due to huge national debt accumulated in the past two decades, since 19. 28. Always, uh, this is a very critical year for Malaysia economic development, 1998. And the other one, 2014, the oil price go down, right? These are the important days. So we have accumulated a lot of debts, huh? and especially after uh, uh, Najib took over the government, yeah, so more debts has accumulated. And Malaysia can only recover after two to three years in the same, before it can ascend to a higher growth rate. We met uh, Kwan Ying after he took office of the Ministry of Finance. Uh, we asked him also about this question. He told us that give him two years. Give him two years, he said he was turn around. He said, this is exactly what I did in Penang. In Penang, when I took over the Chief Ministership, also a lot of problems, financial problems. I need only one and a half year in Penang. But here I need two years. Two years. True enough, you know, in Penang, they don't own any money to the federal government. <coughs> uh, and, and, and the economic <coughs> growth there is fantastic. So I have confidence in, in him. I think three years will be okay. We should be okay. Um, number four, Malaysia China relations has been dented to a certain extent that may affect China to invest in Malaysia. In fact, already, you know, very obvious. They have stopped coming here. But later trade will be also affected. They don't buy our uh, palm oil. If you talk to them nicely, they are talking. Yeah. <laughs> you just tell them, hey, I'm not very poor. You know? <laughs> Please uh, help. Uh, buy a little bit more palm oil. Uh. They won't. China will do that. But when we show muscle to them like that, uh, habis. Uh. Uh, habis. That is not the way to deal with China. Okay, and then uh, inbound tourists from China will also be badly affected. Already, the result already out. Yeah, for 1st of October, the National Day, uh, they call it Golden Holiday. So the, 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 the tourists from China has already reduced by 30%. Okay, whole year also about 30% reduced the Chinese tourists. I have told you how important is Chinese tourists because of their quantity and their spending power. So, and, and tourist, tourism is the area that we can make most money. We export, number one export is what, do you know, Malaysia? Do you know what is our number one export to the world and to China? Electric electronics. Sorry? E&E. E&E, yes. Yeah, do you e &E. know our number one export to China is E&E? &E. Electronics and electrical yeah. products. Okay. <coughs> We export number one export to the world also E and E. Yes. Do you know what do we buy from China? Like before 2017, we are the number one trading partner with China, right? We export E and E to them. What do they sell to us? Do you know? You know what? Also E and E. <laughs> the difference is we sell them parts. Yeah. They it's sell us. Product. Finish production. That's the <coughs> Whatever, yes. Whatever you can do, they can do better, faster, and cheaper. Don't forget. So don't try to be funny with them. Overnight they can do it. So if you are nasty with them, they just 
as the factory because you can't, government control can, can, company is you know, they just tomorrow manufacture this one because Malaysia manufacture this. That is why never be nasty with them. Simple as that. You believe me, you know, if, if you are a frequent visitor to China, you will know you will know that my statement of you they can do better, faster and cheaper. You will know this statement is true. Right? They work too hard. They can work 24 hours. Young men like our lawyer like this, they can work 24 hours. You won't believe it. Really. Too hard working. Too hard working. Ah, South Korea, for example. Why South Korea can be today? Very fast. Huh? Because they work very, very hard. The first time I went there is in the 70s. I went there, so what was the area? Lotel area. I went to a friend's office. Lotel, Lotel. Yeah, Lotel. 24th floor. All the lights are on. All the office call me. All lights on. Night time, 9 p.m. I say, why all the lights on? No, they are working. I say, are you sure? Almost all the office lights is on, you know. I say, yeah, that's how we work. In the 70s, they are very poor. They get they work very hard. That's why they come up. Korea, South Korea is another country to watch. I told you earlier that China, oh no, I didn't tell you. China in this world is the one they use most robots. Okay, number two, South Korea. China use more robots than any country, I'm not surprised. It's such a huge country, right? Such a huge population. But Korea is number two. But the number one, number two, a big gap. Okay, USA is number four, right? using law. Do you know in China now a bank, no staff, mm. all robots, Kyo, sir. Kyo, sir. Uh, with the very yeah. intelligent AI. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of, of the recognised, this is interesting because I don't think anybody disputes that China's got a lot going for it. There's a huge economic powerhouse and a massive consumer base. But um. There has to be, the, I mean, the world is littered with examples of powerhouses that then want to consume the world, and then the world rejects it. Um, uh, and then, you know, it becomes everybody's equal, but some are more equal than others, and it, it creates this sort of, you know, a very bad uh, environment globally. So I think that, um, you know, there are two recognized, if you like, left and right. There is uh, the USA and there is China. At the moment, China's going like this, and the USA is trying to get back. And, and, and whether you, I don't think they necessarily represent East and West, but I think they do represent two very, very powerful countries. And in a straw poll that I saw, um, in for ASEAN countries, and if they were told what choice would they have in trading if they could only have all America or all Chinese, the majority chose all American rather than all Chinese because there was an inherent mistrust that, of for what you're saying, well, if you do as you say, you treat us like this, but if you don't do what you say, we're just going to copy you and take it. And whereas in America, there's slightly more protection for that and, and, and a different code. Neither is better or worse. But I'm curious as to where you think that will end up in terms of China's ambition for global domination. Whether China will become more aggressive, will it become stronger? Yes, actually they... The yeah, answer is this. Don't try to be funny with them. Try to be nice to them. They will help you out of the way to help you. That is China. Unlike USA, they are too big, very straightforward. Business is business. All right? They don't talk other things. But China, they don't just talk business, they talk politics also. Okay? And if you are nice to them, if you have value to them, they will protect you, they will assist you. Alright. So just like our railway line, for example, we can tell them that we are short of fund. We have no money because the previous government incurred high costs. Alright. So we need to reduce the cost of construction. Can you kindly reduce it? We know very well somebody has cycled out the money, uh, corrupted the money. Yeah. 
We know that we don't have to say that, we just tell them, appeal to them. And China will consider. China will consider. No other country will do that. Okay. I, I know China too well because I go there too often since 1989. Okay. And almost every day if I want to involve myself, uh, I try not to. As I told you, every every year uh, we receive 175 groups of visitors of China, you know, all kinds of people, all right, from government offices to the ordinary people, from business uh, chamber and so on. So pretty well, and I myself go to China very often. Uh, when I was in country high, I also involved a project in Hubei. I, I also know how uh, difficult to deal with China. And therefore, I tell them what to do with business in China. I have no investment in China because it's really too difficult. What, what kind of difficulty? Too difficult that? to know them. Don't think that they are Chinese, you are Chinese, and therefore very easy, you know. No, no. Not at all. <laughs> I thought the first thing you need to have a girlfriend first. <laughs> Understand the culture. Uh, well, my, uh, what you're saying is that, like last time, also Japanese. Chinese is enigmatic, enigmatic. You, know, you think you know them, and you don't know them. Well. But, but what, to answer to your question, the concept is the Chinese is basically this: they're not in your face. Mm. They're not upfront. They don't attack anything. But they basically will a big stick. When you become the aggressor, then I will show my stick. Yes. So actually, that, that's that's yes. fine. You know, whereas Americans are in your face, you know, yeah, like yes. front. Everywhere, get everybody on the wrong side. They don't. They do things quietly, but you get on the wrong side, your hand comes out, you whack it with your hands. Yes. Actually, what, what, one of the things, one of the things is that I think in terms of uh, knowledge capability, China has been to a tipping point. Yes. When I say tipping point, this is at point. Okay. Right now, there are, there are no fear they about fear knowledge now. and technology. And they have come to a point. If you go to Huawei, for example, I was there, the Huawei the Development Center, they have 530, 40,000. And all the top notch people, if you look at even the way China has been full and honesty, they, are, they have come past the stage of being a copycat. Yes. They have passed yeah. the change to become mm -hmm. a technology driver now. Yes. So, this is one thing uh, that, whether you like it or not, a country who invested in education systems like India and China eventually. <coughs> uh, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I also hear what you're saying around around um, conversation and negotiation, but um, that's from our point of view in Malaysia, I think Taiwan would have a very different view about whether China is aggressive or not. And I think that the Philippines um, has a very different view on whether China is aggressive or not. I think they're scared because they're actually taking back the land and they're forcibly owning the South China Sea. It's not their land. But nobody wants to step down that route because that's going to go into something that's completely different. So I guess what I'm saying is that um, I don't know if it's romantic to say that don't, you know, going into any negotiation where you just curtail. That's not a negotiation. That's, yes. that's just... But that is the way to negotiate China. Mm. Yeah. Way, yeah. You have to. Yeah. If, if, to if you do not apply the USA okay. style, then you okay. are not going to. And that's half their market. Yeah. Yeah. You the US is half their market. Yeah. South America is half their market. You can't, go to South, you can't expect a South American to go to China and be like, that's not going to work. Have you ever tried that with but, Peruvian or? No, but their strategy is this Brazilian. Or? US is going to be a confrontation with them. Yeah. Because they have agreement. But what they're going to do, they're going to spread, spread their tentacles into ASEAN. Into other yeah. ASEAN, ASEAN and also Africa. And yeah. all so the concept here is that, you know, it's without a doubt, it's economic imperialism. Mm -hmm. It's without a doubt. We all know it already, right? Yeah, but, major what, yeah, but what you're saying is that for those economic imperialism, there is also an ulterior motive or, you know, altruism in that we will help the poor to be better, but we will control them. You know what I mean? Indirectly, mm -hmm. through investment. So it's, in a way, it's economic colonization, yeah. but it's in a peaceful manner, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. hopefully yeah. Just now, yeah. Yeah. All right. Just now, Anthony mentioned about, you know, you know copycat. There are no more copycat. Yeah. I don't know yeah. whether you are aware or not that while we are talking 5G, mm. most yeah. of us don't know what is 5G, right? Yeah. But it's already in the market. Yeah. But do you know that Huawei already got 6G? Where is it? Already in the market. 6G. You know what is 6G? 6G means 10 times 
faster than 5G. Imagine. So they are no more competitors. <laughs> that is true. <clears throat> so uh, we have to really look at China from very different perspective. We already have to change our thinking. And therefore, I encourage you to go to China as often as you can. Uh, so okay. that you know. I'm this not... retreat will go. Yeah, exactly. When is it? Yeah. October. <laughs> okay. Where are you going for to? Yeah, no, no. We have to. Huh? We have to come and see you. He knows about the contact. Yeah. We have visited yeah. you to China. Yeah. Yeah. First, some Chinese. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
Are you going to stay with us for lunch? Uh, no, because I have to go for the AE. Oh, AE, AE uh, today, we stay to the AE. 